Throughout time, the relationship between art and people have endlessly intertwined to tell the story, life, history, and culture of many civilizations around the world. In fact, ancient civilizations such as the Near East, ancient Egypt, and early Asia were the precursors to modern art today as they created early art from materials around them to reflect their beliefs, ideas, and values in their society. Looking at ancient Egypt and China in particular, they have both unique and similar stories evoked through their artworks that continue to instill wonder and curiosity within young and old minds alike. In the carefully selected artworks I have chosen, they communicate the history and practices during the specific time and demonstrate the idea of elite women and female rulers within ancient Egypt and early China. It further reflects how these women may have shifted the power, status, and influence of women today. Focusing on my first chosen artwork, it is a sculpture depicting the likings of Egypt's greatest female ruler, Queen Hatshepsut. The Egyptian limestone sculpture titled Seated Statue of Hatshepsut was created between 1479 and 1458 BC and was located in her temple in Deir al-Bari. This sculpture is a larger-than-life depiction of Queen Hatshepsut sitting upright with her hands opened at the knees. It further depicts her wearing a headcloth and kilt that was considered ceremonial attire for an Egyptian king. Despite the masculine attire, her statue radiates feminine beauty. Taking a closer look at the queen's physical features, it exudes perfection, beauty, confidence, and power. As the sculpture outlines the curves of her feminine figure, beholds her face having well-defined symmetry, and displays her flawless posture as she sits up straight in her throne. Considering Hatshepsut's statue was originally found as fragments in her temple, it was restored and later discovered that after the queen's death, her successor, Thutmose III, set out to destroy her statues to obliterate her memory. He further eradicated all images of her as a king on the temples and monuments she had built to possibly erase her example as a powerful ruler and to close the gap in the dynasty's line of male succession. This demonstrates that many, including members of Egypt's elite, rejected Hatshepsut's divine right to rule due to her status as a woman. As these monumental objects and statues, such as the seated statue of Hatshepsut, were used to teach the public to honor and respect the king, Hatshepsut carefully crafted her image to depart from the traditional kingly imagery of her time. She reinvented her image to legitimize her power and emphasize her role as the father and god of Egypt. Hatshepsut accomplished this by shifting her image and using aspects of androgyny to respect and represent herself as a female king. As Egypt heavily represented the pharaoh and his principal wife as the mother and father of Egypt, Queen Hatshepsut is depicted alone since she did not have a partner to establish her power to the throne. Conveying herself as both male and female in her statue reiterates her being both the mother and father of Egypt, which helped to gain the acceptance of the Egyptian people. Since her statue is found in her funerary temple, it further illustrates Hatshepsut's arms extended to receive offerings from beyond the grave, and it even is adorned with carvings on the sides of her throne that are feminized to read the perfect goddess, lady of the two lands, and bodily daughter of Ray. This reveals the ancient Egyptians' understanding of religion and the afterlife, as they believed that funerary statues, such as the seated statue of Hatshepsut, reflected the hope for an enjoyable existence in the afterlife for the pharaoh. Overall, her funerary statue shows us viewers how gender and power can be manipulated through works of art and architecture in relationship to Hatshepsut's reign as pharaoh. In my second artwork that I have chosen, it is an ancient Chinese figurine titled Female Dancer that was made from earthenware with slip and pigment during the Western Han Dynasty of China. Its primary purpose was to be used as tomb pottery for the Chinese elite, perhaps as an entertainer to continue to serve an aristocrat in the afterlife. Furthermore, the figurine stands about two feet tall and vividly captures the essence of a female dancer. The female dancer is painted in soft colors and is depicted in a traditional Chinese loose sleeve dress with one arm lifted and her body arched to exhibit her sacred dance. Her hair is pulled up to reveal the porcelain complexion of her skin. This figurine also portrays the dancer flexing her knees as she lifts one heel to advance her step, 
performing a dance described in Han Dynasty poetry. Their long sleeves, twirling and twisting, fill the hall, gauze stocking feet, taking mincing steps, move with slow and easy gait. They hover about long and continuous, as if stopped in midair, dazed, one thinks they are about to fall. This beautifully captures a female essence as a delicate and gentle flower who transports worldly pleasures and activities into the afterlife. This figurine's size and frail appearance indicates the value and status of women during the Han Dynasty. Women generally had a lower status in society according to the popular views of Confucianism. Confucian ideas of women further led people to believe that they were always to obey and serve the men around them. Furthermore, in a Confucian society, Men were generally more powerful and had higher status, whereas women were deemed to have no brilliant talent and only had value and worth through participating in womanly activities. Chinese artists skillfully portrayed these activities as the focus of Chinese beauty. Moreover, they affirmed that the female image should be richly endowed with blossoming loveliness and feminine charm that could be seen in the female dancer. As the underlying principle for the betrayal of the female image was to make visible the qualities of the ideal woman. Women in Chinese art must be the embodiment of the virtues expected of her subordinate role in Confucian patriarchal society. Looking back at both distinct art pieces from ancient Egypt and China, they convey messages of the beliefs and values of their civilizations. They even demonstrate the advanced technical skills and craftsmanship of their time. Concerning the funerary practices and beliefs of these two civilizations, they convey a similar message towards the quest for eternal life. Since the seated statue of Hashtaput and the female dancer are both funerary artworks utilized in tombs and coffins, they signify a greater purpose, to serve and display the significance of the deceased person. In both early Egyptian and Chinese customs, burial rites were only given to elite and powerful figures. In fact, Han funerary art was well developed and often compared to Egyptian tomb art, where both cultures had tombs ornately adorned depending on the statue of the deceased. They further believed the soul's journey into the afterlife required tombs to be filled with worldly goods, art, food, and water. Both cultures even utilized mummification techniques to preserve the bodies of royalty, as their tombs would serve to prove that the rich in power not only desired to live forever, but were expected to. These two artworks further suggest the social and political position of women in ancient Egypt and China, as both artworks serve to paint a representation of the female image within their respective civilization. They portray contrasting ideas of the role of women in their societies. When viewing the seated statue of Hatshepsut, it is a grand and respected depiction of Queen Hatshepsut, demonstrating the history of women in Egypt. An Egyptian woman was found free, respected, and in the full exercise of personal rights as extensive and widely recognized as the rights of men. Egyptian women were also distinctly a man's legal and social equal, and in some respects, his superior, where funerary sculptures and monuments display the complete equality of the two sexes. Hatshepsut's statue symbolizes her reign as a woman, but more importantly, her strength and success as a leader of Egypt. She constantly had to prove her title to the throne as she authorized impressive trading adventures, held massive conquests, and commissioned massive construction projects. When viewing the Chinese figurine titled The Female Dancer, it contradicts and rejects the Egyptian's idea of women. Its small and delicate stature reveals that women during the Han Dynasty had to conform to Confucian beliefs that restricted them to a narrow sphere of life within the confines of home and family. The Chinese figurine further tells us that women were represented not as real people, but as a product of male construction, and reminds us that the female image is a symbol of masculine power and superiority in Chinese society. Overall, these artworks paint us a broader picture and understanding of ancient women. It tells us the many stories of women who had to battle the disadvantages of roles and conventions made by men and for men who dominated government, public life and society. This teaches us as viewers the roles of women and how it has expanded and shifted to advance their status and influence in the world today.